How's it going guys? In this video, we'll go over the potential damage that the autonomic nervous system's fight or flight sympathetic process can have on the body when it's chronically overactive. Cushing syndrome and anxiety disorders are among the most common causes of this, but in general, chronic stress is considerably prominent in the US, as are most of the conditions that chronic stress can cause or even exacerbate. The autonomic nervous system often alternates between prioritizing the sympathetic division, the fight or flight pathways, and the parasympathetic division, which are the rest and digest or the feed and breed processes. And while the functions of both tend to overlap normally most of the time, total expression of one will eventually impede processes of the other and over a long enough timeline that can become pathologic, causing a whole bunch of different chronic diseases. So studying the functions that are neglected by the fight or flight process can explain the correlation between the stress-linked diseases and the parasympathetic nervous division. Whenever you're in a situation your amygdala perceives as dangerous or threatening, even if that's just watching a scary movie or if you have an irrational phobia of some sort, your fight or flight response will initiate with the hypothalamus triggering the release of epinephrine or adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol by the adrenal cortex. This potent cocktail of hormones have several simultaneous effects, and I'm just going to go through them organ by organ. So in the brain, you have alertness increasing rapidly. That's chiefly due to norepinephrine and epinephrine. Uh, sometimes this is even to the point of tunnel vision, and your pupils will dilate. In the heart, you have an increase in blood pressure, and you also have an increase in heart rate. In the lungs, those are prompted to increase the respiration rate to try to pull in more oxygen, and sometimes this is even to the extent of hyperventilation. So in the lungs, you also have vasodilation. Now in the skeletal muscle, you also experience vasodilation as more blood is shunted to them uh, in order to allow for greater movement and strength capabilities uh, during an emergency situation. Uh, the liver is stimulated to take stored glycogen and turn that into glucose for readily available quick energy. And the entire digestive tract can undergo vasoconstriction, which can cause like heartburn in the esophagus as that tightens, uh, butterflies in the stomach, and slowed or even halted digestion in the GI tract. Um, the immune system is primed in mobilizing resources, uh, stimulating immune activity, but over time that's, that's going to become weaker. So we'll, we'll go into that now. Uh, as each of these effects can, re can directly be correlated to an increased prevalence of consequential diseases, when the sympathetic fight or flight response is overactive. So we'll just go back into them respectively. In the brain, in, the con in contrast to the intense focus that you might get from epinephrine and norepinephrine, uh, adrenal fatigue can kind of eventually set in. That's kind of a, a term that is thrown around uh, or associated with brain fog. You, your brain is just not working as clearly. Uh, and a decrease in norepinephrine is even associated with ADHD. Um, the increase in blood pressure can eventually cause hypertension, one of the most common disorders in the US. Uh, which greatly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and death by other causes. Uh, cortisol diminishes the function of endothelial fat metabolizing cells, causing an increase in atherosclerosis, so plaques basically in the blood vessels, uh, which stiffen them. And this also contributes to cardiovascular disease and stroke risk. The stress response can also worsen symptoms of asthma or chronic disease uh, like COPD, uh, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, if those things are pre-existing. Uh, Constant tension can also lead to like neck and shoulder and back pain, in addition to being a trigger for like rheumatoid arthritis and some other conditions that are potentially pre-existing. Uh, cortisol specifically triggers appetite to increase. So in the liver, as, as I mentioned previously, as glycogen is being turned into glucose, there's also this increase in appetite. Together, that can lead to an increase in visceral fat storage and increase the risk of obesity. So specifically, visceral fat is, is most potent with cytokine release which is also another factor that increases the risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke. And with digestion slowed down over longer term, you can have constipation or even irritable bowel syndrome. And additionally, as less blood flow is going to the GI tract, uh, you can have a decrease in the favorable gut bacteria. And the immune system finally is eventually weakened from chronic stress, making colds and opportunistic infections more likely to occur at greater frequencies. So in addition to all of this, chronic stress can also be linked to triggering acne or psoriasis, any kind of skin and hair disease, or like even hair loss, uh, menstrual irregularity and decrease in fertility, sexual dysfunction in men and women, and even, I think most interestingly, shortening of uh, telomere length. And the telomeres are the little caps on the ends of chromosomes. So according to the Hayfleck limit of cellular aging, as uh, telomeres decrease in length, cells become closer to apoptosis, and that leads to biological signs of aging. So if you ever heard someone joke that a stressful event or a stressful relationship has caused their hair to go gray, there actually might be some truth in that. 
So here's a brief summary of some of the, the main points, I think, the, the take-home points here. And uh, thank you for watching.